You're watching GSTV, the gas station television network. All right. Here we are, episode two of The Goblin and the Ghoul, not The Gremlin and the Ghoul. I'm your host, Thomas, a.k.a. Young Gas Station. Eli, how we feeling this fine Tuesday afternoon? Good. Been a little bit under the weather, uh, but I've recovered with a lot of sleep and too much water. I'm ready to roll. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got a lot of important topics to cover today. You know, yesterday, last week, it was Concrete Critters, the... Uh, the undeniable truth of the the true world of the homeless and uh, extended cast. Today, I thought maybe we could talk about one of our favorite things, which are fake places. And I kind of just want to hear about your experience with these, how serious you actually think they are, and if there really are places in the world that genuinely are fake or not real or somehow misunderstood perhaps even i don't know how far the rabbit hole goes what do you think about it so i was thinking about how to conceptualize what i mean by fake places ahead of this and i'll just sort of do it on the fly because i didn't actually practice or rehearse it but what i mean by fake places and let me know if you agree is there's a lot of things that you experience as you wander around the world that you're just like, yeah, no, that's that's totally what that is. And you sort of take for granted that things just are the way that they are. But maybe it's my adolescent use of uh, hallucinogens or maybe mm-hmm. it's books I've read or maybe it's just the way that I was created. I've noticed there's a few things that you're just like, dude, that cannot actually be a real fucking thing. And I, the more I think about it and the more I look for it, the more frequent it is. So I don't know if you want me to start off with like the first example of a fake place. And, you know, this is an abstract concept and I guess it could depend on who you are, but I think there's a few universal truths when it comes to fake places that are just things that you're like, nope, nope. When I really think about that, that cannot be actually how things are. So right. where do you want to take it? Do you want to go with an example or do you have any um, audits to that definition or explanation? No, I think you put it really well. You know, like fake places, sometimes they can be quote unquote real, but like people maybe are just too accepting of it. And maybe it's something that should be changed or shouldn't be the way it is. Um, I'd love to hear some examples. I have a couple myself yeah. and some interesting things on reddit of course one of my favorite communities on there is is very much related to this topic but i'd love to hear what you have uh, so the first one that i'll talk about i actually was just thinking about this all right and i don't think i've told you this one maybe i sent it to you retail popcorn stores so you'll see these i don't think they're everywhere in the united states certainly not everywhere in the world But the idea that there's multiple locations where you walk in and you spend, you pay an an escalated rate for what is essentially stale, poorly flavored popcorn. Yeah. What the fuck is that, dude? Like, seriously, there's someone paying a lease on a building. They are reporting to their to the IRS an income that makes sense that that they're selling retail flavored popcorn. Again, I'm sure everyone listening and everyone in the world is driven by these guns. Yeah, yeah. I've never been there. I've never even considered going there. But there's a storefront paying their rent that's a retail popcorn store. No, I know the one you're talking about in downtown Bloomington. And um, we would walk by that when I used to work down there. And for the longest time, no one actually worked at that specific shop. So maybe we're getting too inside baseball on it. But at this one, at least, I never saw it open. And it's a really like, of course, it's a small store and like, yeah, maybe if you were really into popcorn, but I really don't know what that would do other than be like, maybe a way to, it seems like the perfect money laundering operation because for one thing, it's not shady. It's not like a creepy, like car repair place that people might be like, oh, that's a definite money front or a gas station that no one uses. But like a popcorn store, it could be the perfect cover because it's whimsical you know, perfect for children. Um, everyone loves popcorn. It's family friendly. I think we might be onto something, man. I don't think popcorn stores, they certainly actually do sell popcorn, but maybe they're 
what's going on behind the scenes could be a little more. So you're highlighting some really important parts about the concept of a fake place that I want to explore. I'm not saying that when you walk into or you go to the door of a popcorn place, you move your hand towards the door and it's like a hologram, it's right? A void. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. not what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm saying that something about the operation system that that exists within does not make any fucking sense to me. So yeah, the classic like teenage excuse for that is, oh, it's a money laundering front. I really yeah. think with some fake places, it's – there's something going on that we're not even able to comprehend because it could mm. literally be like, dude, I, I don't fucking know aliens or like the popcorn place is a front for uh, massage stores or something like it doesn't make any like sense that. because it's fake places are also things that are close enough to what you think would definitely be real. But the more you think about it, you're like, no, that right. that really doesn't add up. So you you pointed that out. I don't know. I don't have an explanation for what it is, but yeah. it's fucking suspicious. Um, do you want to share any of your fake places? Because I have a list, but I, I want to go back and forth if you do. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's the classic one that everyone's heard of, the mattress store. I like I like the mattress store one because I personally have never even been to a mattress firm really. Um, I've ordered all my recent couches and, uh, furniture online, but I think that's definitely just like a, a case of being a millennial and not wanting to walk into any store if you don't have to, but you know, there are definitely too many of them, but you know, at the same time, like maybe they, I mean, certainly some of them are real, right? That's the thing. And I like what you said about, you know, it's not a void, but there is some kind of thing about fake places, at least when you and me have had these discussions where it's like, you're right, you're right out of the money. It's almost real. It gets past 99% of the population. Um, well, dude, but, everyone needs a mattress. We're all sleeping on shit, true. you know? Um, and I was, I, I purposely didn't tell you this. I went to a mattress store on Sunday, a mattress firm. Okay. Because I'm moving into a new house that we bought and where you want to get a new bed because my girlfriend's always complaining about the beds, the problem with sleep. Um, right. It's the bed. And, and anyways, we went into one and I, I kid you not, this isn't evidence to it being a fake place, but I walk into the mattress firm that's on the west side of Bloomington, Indiana, uh -huh. and there is one person sitting at the front desk and it's a child eating Wendy's. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's proof it's not real, but it is such a low occupancy rate or low patron and rate. They're huge. Huge, right? <laughs> yes. It's large. And the other piece of evidence that is for it being fake is you walk around and you're like, yeah, I mean, I laid on this bed, like relatively comfortable. Um, I mean, I don't really know what made it different than other beds. And you look at the price, and you're like, that's $5,300. Yeah. For a fucking mattress. And they're like, 0% zero zero financing. Because oh, people finance. are, what? <laughs> people are taking debt on their beds. Yeah, dude. That's a really good one. Fuck. Well, that gives more evidence for it being fake because yeah. think about it. It's so expensive. People – there's less and less of a middle class, but mattresses I feel like are just getting more expensive. So there's more evidence that there's just all this inventory sitting there doing nothing and no right. one's ever coming in. Well, you and know? also this, the discrepancy from like buying the Chinese ones online like a, a purple or like a zero. You can get mattresses for like 200 bucks on Amazon. Yep. That difference, I mean, the quality is obviously not great. It's like a, a year long mattress versus like that one could last you 10 years. But at the know. same time, dude, I remember when I was a kid, like a nice Tempur Pedic was like two grand. Yeah. And that yeah. was when you were balling. Yeah. I mean, obviously, inflation and just over time, things are more expensive. But man, 5,300 bones. <laughs> Well, okay. More evidence. Um, you know, I always talk to the people who work at like any retail store because definitely do. I love to hear like what's up in their life, uh, their little spiel. And this woman, God love her, you know, probably 120 pounds overweight, and her kids eating Wendy's at the mattress firm store on a Sunday, yeah. or actually, I think it was a Saturday, mm -hmm. and. She starts to ramble off. She's trying to sell me like an adjustable base so that I can have my feet four inches in the air versus Whoa. laying flat because that makes sense. Yeah. And she starts to list off all these medical benefits, no citations, no actual facts, just, 
oh, when you get into a zero gravity position while you sleep, like you've got no more back pain after that. Mm. This is eliminated. You you start to be able to speak Mandarin and you don't even need to eat <laughs> uh, vegetables anymore because you know you you're floating. No, no, I, I'm just I'm just joking because okay. basically, to me, someone saying like facts that are medical facts at yeah. a fucking mattress store that's a it, fake place. It's, you yeah. could be saying anything to me and I would just go, yeah, totally. Yeah, dude. When people upsell you and start telling you the benefits, it is you just like you never get sold to that if you're like your doctor is never trying to sell you on what to do. Right. So why is this person all of a sudden like telling you better? You know, it's like, what is your what is your ulterior motive here? Is you want me to buy an expensive mattress is their motive? Well, retail hasn't caught up to the Internet yet. And, and that's fucking obvious. Right. That's why it's dying. But yeah. to try to spit these facts to me that I can literally Google in four seconds and understand mm -hmm. a bunch of different opposing viewpoints. But she's getting the same spiel that like Mark and Ricky were being taught at the fake mattress convention in 1982. Like it hasn't right. changed probably. Yeah. Same script. Exactly. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones that are other fake places that I want to talk about. I mean, Mattress Firm is like up there. I, I thought about bringing up Home 2, but someone had a good point about is Home 2 like something other people know about or is that a regional? Excuse no, me, it's Hilton definitely it's, na it's nationwide and it's something that I thought about too. Okay. I even pulled up some pictures of Home 2 and let me pull that up. If you want to share the screen, I, I think I have a very concise argument for why this is a fake place. Yeah, if you look at this, I mean, that's like the model for it. And it's just so soulless. And I don't know, at least the one in our hometown, it just kind of popped up out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, there was just like this home to by Hilton. And... You know, I guess everyone needs hotels to stay in. But <laughs> Look at the guy's picture in the corner with, this, with the face. That guy. There's something about Sorry. this that I'm just not buying. <laughs> it's the colors, dude. The It's so unappealing. This like green and dark brown. It, it looks it looks like a insert text here. Like it looks like a sample of a logo. Like this would be like what they would bring into the pitch. And then they never actually fixed it. And um, yeah, I'm just not buying it. What's your opinion on, on Home 2? What fascinates me is the idea that Hilton, one of the largest hotel brands, at least nationwide, I have, I have no idea about their global presence, but right. it's the idea that billions of dollars went into the development of Hilton and has for a long time, right? And then there were a bunch of executives sitting around a table or a Zoom call or whatever the fuck, and some guy, woman, or whoever said, you know, I think we go with home too. Like we've heard all these things and it's like home one. That's where you live. Oh, what about your second home? And then see, everybody went brilliant. That guy gets it. And they it's ran an with awful it. awful name. It's <laughs> terrible. Like it's so if lazy. You're, if you're driving, let's say you're on a road trip, right? Like I'm more likely to stay at a days in because days in you, you get it. You got the sunrise. It's a, it's a fairly cheap motel, but I'd say on motel standards, it's up there. It's above Super 8. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Home and, too. Like, what were they thinking? Well, I want to go back to some history. If you remember when the Home 2 came up in Bloomington, I don't remember exactly the year. Say it was like 2016 or something yeah. like that. I had never seen one before. I'd never heard of it. Not that I'm this avid road tripper or whatever, inspecting mm. hotel chains. But then, because I remember the Snapchat videos I made back then, then I would go to Destin, Florida every year pretty much or every other year from a family vacation for spring break. Then like the same year we started this bit about home to in Bloomington, I'm driving through Destin on our way down and there's a fucking home to yeah, they right where we it always – <laughs> and They that's, reloaded the update. See, that speaks to the more of the, the fake places thing, right? Yeah. Like it's sort of – Whatever's going on in the algorithm or our existence, it, it can't always keep up with all the details. And so, right. oh, there's a home too where this person always is. They're going to another place. Well, what do yeah. we have to put there? Home too. Yeah. And then, dude, like I feel like they roll it out all at once. And then other people, like most of society just accepts it. And I think this is the biggest thing. It's like we are just – asking questions and we could be wrong but oh, yeah. the point is we are looking at this from like 
an analytical perspective where we're like, that doesn't add up. That's weird. Why is it called home too? And one of the funniest things that we had anecdotally was every time we'd ask our friends about it, they had either no comments <laughs> or they seemed to not want to talk about home too. It was almost like we were saying like we were talking about the thing you weren't supposed to talk about that the people watching are like, if they say home too, you fucking laser beam them, dude. And it's like, what the hell? No one seemed to get it. But uh, this is a really good transfer into. I don't want to use the term NPCs, but I like to use yes. the term background characters. Background characters, yes. And dude. this is he's getting at the phenomena of like, I have a lot of people in my life, even people I consider like decent friends. But then you ask yourself, like, what do they do, or what do they do when they go home? And you're like, I really, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you because when I ask them either specific or somewhat substantive questions, they're just kind of like, yeah, that I just got zapped by the ether telling me don't, don't comment on this. Just change, deflect, change the subject. Deflect. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the idea, and I swear we're not both narcissists. Maybe we are, but the probability is relatively low. Um, it kind of makes you think these other people just go home, the background characters, and they sit down in their chair yep. and just stare at the wall. And that's, that's what they do until they're asked about home too, right. or asked a generic question about what do you like to eat? And they're like, uh, -huh. or like the sports teams, how they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The new, uh, what the new Burger King meal is. They're really excited <laughs> about that. They have a lot of I can't opinions. can't stand that dude. That's a, a separate conversation. But when people have passionate debates about like the new thing or like your favorite kind of candy, I like, I hate that so much because it's so like, it's such a pointless conversation. And the people that like have nothing to talk about will always take such a freaking hard line stance on like Reese's puffs, but then like have no opinion on politics or like, you know, anything substantive like hobbies or like they have nothing going on otherwise. And it, but like the new chicken McNugget from McDonald's is like, you have to try this. You must eat this. You must be fat. You must conform to the, to the system. Right. Yeah, I, I really Mountain Dew. Uh, <laughs> look at this. This is a Mountain Dew Spark. Totally going crazy lately, and it's like, yeah. yeah when, when did this come out? <laughs> I bet they know. I bet the background characters fucking they know. know. And I wonder, was the feeling of your peers coming off as background characters was that as big of a or as large of a prevalency uh, before the internet? I don't know because we didn't really exist then, mm. or at least not for long. So I'd be interested if we had. If we could call someone who's just significantly older than us and explain this sort of like concept and if they would go, no, I know what you're saying. It wasn't really a problem in my youth. Or they'd say, oh, yeah, dude, like same thing, just generic conversations to sort of speak of are there more background characters? Mm -hmm. Have social skills diminished so much that we can't have like substantive conversations or people's opinions are just like regurgitated internet uh, right. conversations? I don't know. But that's an interesting – um we could interview somebody about that. It's definitely not. It impossible. would be interesting, and I would love to know more about it. And certainly, some of it is kind of like that narcissistic narcissistic thing where you're like, "I'm more important than you are." But at the same time, dude, there are some fucking people, especially in America, that are just like, "What are they doing?" Like, we just walk by them on the street, and they're just that person is fake. That person can't be a real person. I have another piece of evidence for this. Uh -huh. So. Think about the like average person you see when you go out to like a nice restaurant or even a, a very generic uh, restaurant chain like a Texas Roadhouse or something. Mm -hmm. Perfect example. Those people, you know, like there's an average way people look. There's sort of like nothing too out of the ordinary most of the time. But then if you go to like a, a place that everyone is required to go at some point in their life if they're an American citizen like the BMV – Yep. or some other government office, you're going to see such a wider variety of people that you don't normally see, which to me gives you more evidence that there's a spot, like a decent chunk of the population that's just sitting in a room staring at the wall yeah. because you'll only see them when you have to see them. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely an interesting theory, if nothing else. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about this reddit community have you heard of r slash glitch in the matrix before i've heard about it but i don't i didn't join it yeah so i'll share my screen i think it's pretty interesting let me know if you can 
see it now. Is this being shown yep. correctly or is it just home too? I can all see right. it. So this is a good video. I just have top all time. This is called poorly programmed people. And this is, is just the algorithm. It's just sending them out. They walk to the left and then they just, they're like, oh, my code is wrong. I need to go this way. So like, this one, I... I don't, I actually think I can explain this not to like hack on the video. It looks yeah. like there's relatively new construction in a place people used to walk that yeah, was recently yeah. blocked off. So people won't know it. Not to spoil you, but that would That's be my fine. explanation. That's fine. Could be wrong. The comments might say, oh, I live here. This construction's been here for 25 years. You know, like for I don't sure. really know. Is there any other gold there? Um, let me see. Um, this is pretty good. This one's like kind of funny. I need to get better at using fucking Zoom, dude. I'm feeling like a boomer. No, Here fine. we go. We can cut Kilo it out. Billboard in Odessa, malfunctioning. It's uh, convincing motorists that they were living in the Matrix, but it was also being run on on ninety eight. Whoa, I mean, whoa, whoa, just... wait. whoa, wait! I don't understand this at all. So there's a digital billboard billboard malfunction in the fog. So this was a billboard right here, like an ad online. Yeah, yeah, and it just looked like that. Like imagine you're just driving <laughs> yeah, that's at night fake. and you just saw that, bro. Yeah, that's fake. Like you definitely would think that that's like. Yeah, this this shit's fake. That's totally um, fake. But I want to really get to like the text posts. I haven't really perfectly timed our number plates. I mean, yeah, there's some interesting pictures, but like, dude, the best things were like people's like anecdotal stories. Oh, I have about. a great one. I have a great one. All right, let's go to you. I'm kind of sharing bullshit right now. No, no, you're totally fine. Um, Pardon me. I didn't get it organized as I was doing stuff right up to this, but... I sent the post to myself, so I should be able to find it. Perfect. Here it is. Here we go. But yeah, glitch in the matrix is just like people that are like having an experience where they feel like they kind of j- maybe jump forward in time or like I heard one with his family's driving along the road. And how do you know what's true on the internet? But let's just like take it with a grain of salt. They're driving and they're going through this town and they're in like the middle of nowhere, Illinois. And then all of a sudden they were driving and then they were just like, in the 1950s like they went to this town and there's all these old cars and like wow they come out the other side and it's like they turn to each other and they're like what the hell was that and like you know what is that like i obviously i wasn't there and i love just like believing it because it makes it more fun dude like what if they did do that what if they time traveled what if they hit a glitch in the matrix this is almost a perfect segue to this reddit post and so before i go to it you want me to read the whole thing? Like I'll do Just my read best. Read the whole thing. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna share the screen though, so people can sort of read it if they're not yeah, listening at fine. the same time. Cool. Okay. And it's a it's a 4chan post 4chan. originally. Yeah. So I think I found a fake town last year, like Truman Show fake. Be me last summer, cross country road trip, hitting up some national parks uh, for going out. Right in yeah. central southern Utah. It's getting late, like 10 p.m., been driving since 6 a.m. It's dark as fuck, no moon, can only see what's lit up by my headlights. Decide to find some place to rest for the night at the next exit. See a town off in the distance. Turn off on only pull off I've seen for an hour or so uh, heading towards town. Pull off in an unmarked and unlit, not on car GPS, no cell phone service. Town is directly ahead though, keep going. Road turns to dirt and is about five miles until it turns to pavement again, right at the town where businesses and houses start showing up. Uh, Immediately, town strikes me as weird. Nobody's on the streets. No cars on the streets or in business parking lots. Jazz music is being pumped through the streets for some reason. Mm -hmm. Not loudly, but loud enough to hear. This town that looked to be about seven blocks wide from some miles out has every major fast food chain I've ever heard of and seven hotels on the main street. Still no cell service, still not on the car GPS. I go to get food. uh, KFC was fully illuminated and unlocked. Nobody there. Same thing with Jack in the Box. McDonald's has a cashier and cook when I get there. Both look annoyed. Take my order. Give me distinctly non-McDonald's nuggets and fries. Leave. Start going to bed for the night. Hampton Inn. Empty parking lot. Third annoyed looking person informs me they're all booked up. La Quinta, person I'm now convinced was the cook at McDonald's, is behind the check-in counter, almost empty parking lot, also fully booked. Holiday Inn Express, empty parking lot, person that was clearly the fucking cashier at McDonald's is behind the check-in counter. Surprisingly, they have rooms. Ask him if he's the guy at McDonald's. 
Uh, no, that's my brother. Fuck it. Good enough for me. <laughs> Get to room. Wi-Fi exists, but nothing loads. Shower. Crash. Oh Wake up the God. next day. And I apologize for how long when this is, winded fine. this is, but I, I'm it's sure fine. it's worth it. It's Wake up the next day. No breakfast in the lobby. No other guests. McDonald's guy's still there for checkout. Ask him how to get out of town. Just says, same road you came in on. Head to McDonald's to get something to eat. Town is still playing smooth jazz. Still no one on the street. Order at the drive-thru. Drive-thru lady is definitely the lady from the Hampton Inn. <laughs> Order a fucking McGriddle and black coffee. She hands me a microwave English muffin sandwich and what I assume to be some kind of instant coffee. Place is too fucking weird to stay and argue. Heading down the only fucking road and out of town, maybe three miles onto the five-mile dirt road, notice big metal wire fence on both sides of the road in the desert, meet on the road in a big motorized gate that is open. Soon as I pass through, gate starts closing, get back onto road, finally get onto 62. That's not right. Could have sworn I was on 89 when I decided to pull off, and there's mountains in between. Finally get cell service. Nothing matches description of the town. None of the charges ever show up on my card. I've told someone, I've told some people and one suggested it was Richfield, but I know that was south of where I was and they would have actually charged me for stuff. So, oh my God. And wow. I, they're not to spoil this as like, oh, this is proof of a glitch in the matrix, but I dove deep into the Reddit comments when I found this and this both is like sort of a bummer, but I also think it like, oh, what is that noise? Sorry. I, worry my chickens are getting attacked always you're good but it speaks to what could be sort of facilitating this feeling of fake places but someone said there's examples of this across the world the united states of basically the military creating fake towns to simulate different special ops ops or operations and go through different maneuvers yeah which like yeah I guess that's possible, but like, why would anyone be allowed in there? Right. Like, they just forgot to shut the gate. I don't know. What do you think, dude? It's creepy. Like, I love that. Like, even if it's just like reading the story. Like, I think I might have read something similar to that in the past because I'm fascinated by this stuff. But like, yeah, the whole like uneasiness of being like the only one in town, like the <laughs> only person is such a, like a haunting thing and then seeing the like different cashiers that are like the same people and like dude like when i go to a, a fast food place the people are kind of like nondescript like they're usually either really mean to you or kind of nice and like yeah yeah man that's i don't even know what to think i don't <laughs> want to go there i want to be there no i know i want to stumble upon one but i also yeah. it killed me where he's like Check into the Hampton Inn. It's the same fucking person McDonald's. I don't care. I'm going to sleep. Yeah, good enough for me. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I would be so scared and uneasy, but I bet after all those things, like you would just go to sleep. Um, you just go with it. And the fact that it was like all booked up and like that kind of shit doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> and they like, completely like, they didn't know, even. Dude. Go ahead. Um, what was I going to say? Um, no, what I was thinking is just, yeah, America is so fucking big. Like, there's all this space. Not all of it can certainly be real. Like, yeah. dude, one of the things that I think could also be fake or just blows my mind and I still have never been had this described to me in a way that I was able to accept is like how much food is at every grocery store. We've yes. talked about this for sure. But like, yeah, that was one of mine on the list. You go to Podunk fucking nowhere, Indiana. You go to fucking middle of Arizona desert where like there's no people for 100 miles. You go to like a, a Kroger, um, an Albertsons, Safeway, it's always packed with food. And like, I just don't understand logistically how that's all there. And like, certainly some of the food comes in, but there has to be just like piles of just either fake food or like, or all of our food is just so processed. It's like fucking really bad for us. And that's kind of why everyone's just getting fat, getting stupider, getting more attached to like their next sugar um, yeah. and carbohydrate hit and are just kind of becoming subservient slaves in this, uh, in this world where nothing fucking matters and nobody knows anything except <coughs> what they watched on Netflix and uh, 
you know, they just stare at the fucking wall. I don't know. Does that make any sense? No, it makes total sense. And the one thing I like couldn't wait to jump in with is like, you know, I th- I think it's maybe it started to happen four years ago, but more recently where we, we see things like uh, blank parts per million plastic in our food. And I it made me immediately go, oh, no shit. <laughs> of course there's plastic in our food because of how much food there is. It doesn't make sense. Where did it come from? Oh, uh, no. It also brings gotta up. Gotta start really- buying organic, dude. We gotta go off the grid at some point, you know? You gotta That's grow it yourself. Yeah, off grow the grid. Grow it yourself. Because it, it just, it doesn't and you already make any do that. sense. Kind of tell the people what you do. You do that shit a little bit. Uh, I mean, I just have a garden that's not super big, but I grow a lot of Better different things. People. Yeah. And I, I volunteer at this farm once a week where it's this crazy old guy who we'll have on the pod before too long. He's awesome, but he is a character and a half, as I often say. And he basically, he had a Shark Tank business, him and his wife, where they sold. Um, a product that was on Shark Tank. They made hundreds of thousands of dollars and they tried to roll out in retail. And as if you're not a big box retailer already or associated with one, if you roll out in retail, you need so much cash to keep your shelf right. space to k- get in people's minds mm-hmm. that they, they just didn't have that cash. So they ended up folding and he was so burnt out because he'd done other business. He's like sold textbooks and things. He was so burnt out in the business world. He said, fuck this. I have six acres. I'm going to try to feed my entire family off of these six acres year round. And so I volunteer with him once a week. It'll be two before too long. Just learning how he does everything, his process and his mindset. Um, Because I really think, I mean, dude, if you watched what happened in COVID, if you were fucking alive. Yeah. Even though we never even came close to running out of food, you know, Trevor and Corey couldn't buy 36 T-bone steaks at 4 a.m. in Muncie, Indiana, and people lost their shit. Yeah. So I'd like to be at least somewhat um, capable of providing food for myself. I'm not this crazy, woke hippie who says, I should be able to eat everything I need my whole life from a two-by-two box in my backyard. Yeah. Not not like that. Um yeah, I but think we able to function independent of the system and how we interact with it on a daily basis. If we could function outside of that on our own, it's actually a pretty, pretty powerful and um, liberating, maybe kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And even my realistic goal is 50%. If I just had a little bit of land, 50% of what I eat in a calendar year, I grew or um, helped grow myself. Like yeah. I touched it as it grew. And I think if everybody did that, which is really uh, unlikely, it couldn't be everyone. Right. But if a large percentage or chunk of people could do that, I think it would just set everybody else up to be it happier would. and healthier. It would. Dude, what do you think about like hunting for your own food? I think it'd be kind of fascinating to get into like bow hunting or like crossbowing. Because like while it probably doesn't make sense because you have to kill like the deer or whatever and get it like processed and butchered, but like. I was listening to PK this week and they were talking about how like the average deer gives you like 50 pounds of meat. Dude, you, you kill like two deer, freeze it. I mean, this is like Joe Rogan mode, but that's a lot of fucking protein that you can just have and you wouldn't have to go buy it. I mean, yeah, I, uh, especially when you talk about venison, um, I think a lot of families, could just kill a couple of deer a year and have it processed by Joe Blow or whoever, a friend. Yeah. I, I think it could have a huge uh, a benefit. And I also, on that farm, I recently killed animals for the first time in my life. Like I butchered really? chickens. Okay. And I don't think everyone needs to kill all the food they eat. I'm not saying that, but I think – no. If you ex- at least experience the process from taking life from a living animal, processing it to the point where it's ready to be cooked, I think it makes you number one respect um, animals more and like the na- and nature in general. But it also will inadvertently make you crave meat less because you sort of understand mm-hmm. all that goes into it. Because I mean, dude, slitting an animal's throat when it's hung upside down in a traffic cone and watching its blood drain. And then smelling it from when yeah. you do that to boiling it and defeathering it. Yeah. Just don't want quite as much chicken as I used to. Yeah. And I don't think that's but a think bad it's, thing. It's important, I think, you know, because a lot of people just like to hide and run away from that idea that we're eating living creatures. And I think having that respect, that empathy can like kind of make you a better person. 
and less of a less of a background character who just goes <laughs> to McDonald's to eat the Travis Scott burger. Um, exactly. Dude, I had a completely separate topic. We can also get back into fake places, but I had a concrete critter of the week that I really wanted to bring today. Um, I was watching this video last week, and I watch a lot of these police videos. I find them so fascinating. There's a bunch of channels like Real World Police, Code Blue Cam, and just seeing people get pulled over and what they do and like these police body cam interactions, like there are just some absolute characters on there. So it's like about a three minute video. We can like pause it and kind of go from there, but I just want to kind of get into it and see what your thoughts are on, uh, on this thing. Young lady, do you have a firearm on you? Why is the video lagging? It'll be fine. I have a, I have the copy on my computer that I can always, always edit in. Yeah. Okay, cool. Did you get into an altercation? Were you fired off a gun? Stay over there. Yeah, please stay the fuck away from me. Phoenix, Arizona, by the way. So shout out to the oh. new, the new uh, home turf. Out okay. of Buffalo Wild Wings, also, which is just fantastic, and is just like the yeah. perfect place for this to happen. It is. I didn't do shit. You got your fucking people back. Look, I have everything on my fucking phone. Let me phone. see your phone. Let me see. Show on my me. Phone. Show me who shot it. Has it all on her phone. I didn't have the video, but I have all well, this fucking proof you, on. Like, show me your proof that somebody shot it's the gun. Fucking proof. Red. He's been calling me and he's like, he starts showing me around to all these fucking people. This is her. This Who is her. shot the gun? That bitch in there, the fucking Mexican. That fucking Mexican. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where did she shoot a gun at? Towards me. If I was still overseas, I would have fucking shot her ass. Yes. What are the odds this woman served in the U.S. Armed Forces? Especially if. Okay, not crazy that she was enlisted at one point, but the odds that she saw active duty o- overseas. I mean, 3%. Slim to none. Yeah. yeah. Hey, sir, we'll wait over there. I don't need you on top of us. I'm sorry, but my pizza is I'm going to ask you to go wait. I know. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with that, but I just got to ask you to wait over there. That guy's fucking getting involved. And she's looking for this shit, you know. They're getting her stuff at this point. Mag. It's got scales, it's got so she had some has has scales, has bullets for a three fifty seven Magnum. Which is a big how much her gun weighs. That's a big fucking gun. <laughs> but they don't know if she's armed or not at this point. Who's she texting? God only knows. <laughs> Yep. So they Wait, fucking she pull a gun? Dude, she fucking whips out a fucking 357 Magnum for god knows what reason. Dude, yes. Watch it again from this other camera angle. Look at her. Oh shit. And she shoots it in the air. Wow. And they fucking light her up. As they should. God damn. I felt... I did feel like, though, they used a correct amount of force in this situation. Like, if someone fires off a gun, like... The police have to shoot you at that point, right? Like, you can't just do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I know the whole gun debate and police brutality is, is super fucked up. But, like, in this situation, like, you know, you have to cap a bitch sometimes. But, um... Well, also, like, they didn't shoot her 30 times. No, they shot her, like, she was on the five ground. times, maybe. Or, like, yeah. I don't know. Each one shot, if like, twice. Guns, that's kind of best in it. Best yeah. Scenario. We'll do one last time from the third camera angle. Phoenix 1052, 
But dude, just going from like just standing there and like I don't even care about the story, like what her reasoning was. It's just like amazing and just insane that people fucking do this. I wonder if she su- if she survived. Give me your hand. Come on, stupid. Ah! Like five shots, yeah. Nine two five, David. Nine nine eight. Yep. Yeah, I've seen a lot of worse videos where they just keep shooting them. When they're yeah, on, definitely. So better sure. than that. I think the fact that she was a woman made maybe made them not fucking keep shooting. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Who I'm knows? Sure. Who fucking knows? But yeah, dude, Ooh. concrete career of the week, fucking taking up Ooh. arms. That might have to be a segment. I think it should be at least. Um, <laughs> What else? Any other um, things you wanted to talk about, or I mean, do we want to do a tips with Tom before we leave? I have to call Thomas Farley. Yeah, I, I I prepped him that I'd send him a link at some point. So. All right, see what he's up to. Yeah, I'm gonna send him a link real quick. Hold on. Hopefully, uh, we get some, he uh... he has a fake place that I haven't talked about yet. All right, we can get back into that conversation. Yeah, just to end it. Yeah, I don't know if I had any other really good ones. I mean, I have my whole bit on lucid dreaming. I just yeah. doesn't make any sense. I mean, the one I blatantly stole um, from someone is the, at least if you live in the Midwest or even part of sort of like the South and sort of the like West Midwest, mm-hmm. how there's tons of farmland everywhere when you drive. And I mean, I've spent a lot of time driving to whatever in my life and maybe twice have i seen a guy on a tractor in said yeah. fields there's that a lot of dead really a lot of dead space yeah a lot of places for those fucking fake ass towns to be rendered in yeah um exactly. but yeah oh my oh, god here we go wow it's quick quick uh, pin his response. ass pin his ass okay yeah hold on i gotta add the pin can you third pin it yeah you can third pin there we go hey. you're muted motherfucker you're muted you dumbass there hey we go. got the fucking dance how we doing <laughs> hey, we're doing pretty good. Good, man. Oh, yeah. We're on episode two of, of uh, Goblin and the Ghoul. Dude, Goblin and Ghoul is the next hit. It's on you guys. <laughs> I'm liking the gaming chair, bro. Yeah, we got the gaming chair, and we're, uh, we're partially in the studio right now. So, Bro, I literally wanted to get a wall divider that looks just like yours. I wanted the yeah. fucking Japanese art. but uh, Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is an antique. This is like 100 years old. No fucking kidding, dude. I, yeah. I very, found very one that was in like phoenix that i could have picked up they wanted 200 but i ended up just getting hey, that's, this a, off, steal. that's, that's off a steal that's a fucking amazon for 90 this this thing's probably worth like minimum four grand i'd say minimum minimum four grand <laughs> you bought that when we lived together right farley i bought it no I, I do have a bunch of different pieces though that i just get like ridiculously cheap like i bought this chinese chest over here uh for 50 dollars. it's it's also worth minimum four grand that's probably the one you bought with we we were antiquing together and you bought some cabinet that mm-hmm. or like chess. TV it might stand. have been that one. TV stand. Uh, Dude, collecting okay, collecting various <laughs> artifacts definitely needs to be more of a thing in oh, everyone's yeah. life. Like yeah. mystical objects that could have some kind of power. They do have power. People come to my house and they're like, damn, I like the vibe. So uh <laughs> Thomas, we were we were uh talking for a bit on fake places and uh okay. kind of our opinions on maybe the simulated reality we live in. We didn't get too much into that, but like I was Eli said you might have a fake place in mind that you'd you'd want to bless our listeners' ears on. Uh you know, I have uh, I have several fake places. I I think the most fake though is is Wyoming. Okay. Like if if you are in Wyoming, for example, I think you're most likely if you think you're in Wyoming, you're most likely in Idaho or right. Montana <laughs> because there is nothing in Wyoming. It's a hologram and there's nobody even lives there. I'm state chess champion of Wyoming. You can look this up. No shit. <laughs> I am. And what? let me just tell you, it's not a real place. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. Well, I have a piece of evidence for that. Maybe you guys have you, – you'll have a different answer than me, but have you ever met someone that said, yeah, I was born and raised in Wyoming? Me personally, no. Me either. You know, I have, and I think that person wasn't real also. Yeah, there You're you go. So Big person. I, th- I, think, I think the conspiracy goes deep. I think if you were born, quote, unquote, in Wyoming, you spawned 
you were rendered in you were rendered yeah. in this fake location and then you have <laughs> fake memories i think yeah. that's likely what's going on checks out dude fake memories is super interesting you guys heard of the mandela effect of course that type of shit dude the berenstein bears that one gets me for sure that one got me as well yeah no, there's a but lot it makes sense the berenstein instead of the bernstein yeah it does kind of make sense i, I don't know it's the berenstein isn't it a-i-n that's the but real it sounds it sounds more like bears yeah so i mean i, I think guess. that's an, i think that's another conspiracy is that bears are friendly bears are not dangerous um, right you know unless unless you, you know you're a douchebag yeah, unless you're a fucking piece of shit they only yeah. fuck with douchebags so if you're not a douche bear, like you can go you can feed one you can pet them totally that checks yeah. out that yeah. checks out <laughs> Like leave your food out when you go camping. As long as you're, you know, as long as you're not a douchebag, you know, you might get a baby cub in the morning, but that means you just get to play around with them a little bit. Just little play around with them. The moms, they don't, they don't give a shit really. <laughs> no, they're, they're absentee fathers and the mothers are barely there. That well. is true. People don't talk enough about the absentee fathers in, in bear culture. I know. That's why us human male fathers, we need a little more respect. Even if we're only around for, you know, a couple hours, it's better than the goddamn bears. Fucking bears, dude. Yeah. I Any mean, other yeah. Uh, fake places, Thomas, besides fake Wyoming? Um, you know, what I think is an interesting uh, kind of side fake place is people that think pieces, like places that people think are fakes. For example, um, like meat factories. That's no a good one. one. You know, no one accepts that we, you know, we are uh, getting our meat know from animals they just think it you know it spawns in the grocery store we're fucking just talking about this we dude. were literally 15 minutes ago we were talking about farming and yeah. how uh more people should kill their food so you can fucking identify this is what i really killed what i'm really eating 100 percent. yeah i think yeah. everyone needs that experience yeah even, even if it's just a fish right <laughs> yeah, i'm definitely trying to buy like actual genuine organic stuff because who fucking knows what they're putting in milk these days, dude. i mean like milk is a big one bro place. like you get yourself a gallon of milk for two bucks like god only knows where that came from oh yeah oh well, what yeah. about the oat milk what about the oat milk bro what That's about the shady. almond milk yeah i've been saying this for a while how do you milk a fucking almond it's bro just... rick ross had the same exact thing yeah it's not really with DJ Khaled. i'm gonna play this video really quick just the beginning part of it here is the video now um screen share make sure the audio is connected yeah audio is good not up on the arm oh no no ross rose still frightened no 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 get I'm the almond milk i just got up on two percent milk a couple no, years no no ago. no no get the almond milk now y'all trying to conspiracy <laughs> no no no, no. The, the, and it's the question is it from the almond of the walnut is what? <laughs> out of the peanut. I don't have that answer, and I usually have every answer. He doesn't have no answer. So fucking, what are they doing with those all nuts? What are they doing? <laughs> and you know what else is? The peanuts are not even technically nuts. Like, yeah, I, think we, I think if we looked into this, there's a giant story here. There's definitely the, some guy nut making millions, big, big nut, billions big nut. on the end of it, for sure. Who, who, ha, who is the big nut? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> We should get to the bottom of that ASAP. How fucking of. deep does it go, dude? Fucking deep. It's got to run what. deep, man. It probably goes to Hunter Biden and some hookers. It has <laughs> to. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, Tom, do you have any uh, tip of the day? I do have a tip of the day. I do have a tip of the day. All right. Okay. Um, tip of the day. Another episode of Tips with Motherfucking Tom. Um, if you lose all of your money gambling, just take out a line of credit. Brilliant. Fucking Brilliant. bingo. That yes. is the tip of the day, gents. I hope uh, the Goblin and the Ghoul audience stays frosty. Hey, we appreciate you coming on here as always, Tom. Thank you. Of course. Thank we'll you, guys. See you next week. All right. We'll see, see you next, next week. week. <laughs> oh, God. He's Man, he is. He's fucking dialed in, dude. He knows what the people want. He's a gold mine. He's a gold mine. I mean, also, you lose I all your money. All you can do is bet more. Well, if you, you need to watch his second episode, I guess we'll cross uh, promo cross promote platforms, but he has an arts and art and anarchy podcast. They did have a really funny bit where they call the gambling health hotline. I won't spoil too much. Okay. But the first one like doesn't answer and sends it to voicemail, which is fucking hilarious. That's perfect. You're just <laughs> like, 
you're fucking not rock bottom. You just you just flip your fucking uh, your underwater and your mortgage, and you can't get help. And they're like, yeah, I call back at like normal business hours. You stupid bitch. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's so good, dude. I think we had a pretty good sewed. Like we covered fake places. Like we definitely could get more into like simulation theory, but like I almost feel like that could be an entirely separate episode where we could explore more of like kind of the things we were talking about, but maybe kind of bring them all together on like what exactly is forming these fake places. And I'd love to actually have someone on who is a simulation theory person that could like explain it to us. Yeah, well, we'll have various guests. We'll probably introduce an expert guest in the next episode or two. And then I think in general, excuse me, the pause will build on themselves and we'll reference back Yeah, other episodes. A Critter of the Week's pretty good. And then maybe like just fake places as they come can be a good yeah. recap. Yeah, and if you guys are enjoying the episode, please share it. We're going to try to get this out on all the podcasting platforms, but honestly... You're probably one of our friends listening to these first couple episodes. So just send it to someone, send it to your mom, share it on Facebook. That helps grow the podcast. Word of mouth is huge. And uh, if you're watching this or listening to it in your podcasting app, a positive rating helps out a lot for the algorithm. So facts pump the stock. Yep.